Okay, thanks Ray, and thanks to the team at New and Half for the opportunity. Uh, good afternoon or morning to everyone listening. Uh, I think it's always nice to put a face to a name, so you'll see a mugshot of me on the screen here. Uh, it's a little out of date now. Uh, I have a few more grey hairs, unfortunately, but uh, uh, that's the way things go, so it happens to all of us. Uh, to start, a bit of background on me and my involvement in mobile reach research today. Uh, I'm an account director of the Vision Critical in the Sydney office. And I've been with Vision Critical since mid 2010. Uh, but globally, Vision Critical's been investing in and investigating mobile research since 2008, both in terms of the technical software design side of things and also research on research or best practice in mobile devices research. Uh, Vision Critical launched its mobile web optimized surveys during 2011. And since that time, we've conducted hundreds of multimodal and mobile learning studies. Uh, my background is in quant research, so the set of best practice considerations that follow uh, very much have a survey approach focus. Uh, there's no doubt a whole other set of considerations for conducting qualitative mobile studies. I think it's pretty safe to say that these days an ever increasing number of people are leading mobile centric lives. Smartphone and tablet penetration continues to expand in both mature and developing research markets. In Australia, smartphone, smartphone penetration is approaching 70% and tablet penetration is somewhere between the 20 to 30% mark. Further, mobile devices have become the epicenter of many people's social and professional lives, fulfilling ever more functions that have traditionally required separate and unique devices. Okay, so that's pretty well understood and appreciated. I think it's also commonly known that it is getting harder to reach and engage with traditional online research practices. Whilst mobile presents us as an industry with considerable opportunities to address this issue, it also comes with some challenges in terms of both designing and fielding representative research in a way that motivates repeat participation or ongoing engagement, which for us at Vision Critical is a crucial consideration in what we do in managing research communities. To start, there are technical limitations. There are over 6,500 different, different web enabled, enabled devices with different operating systems or versions of the same operating system, unique browser applications, each with its own characteristics, different input modes, that is touch screen versus full QWERTY keyboard versus keypads, different screen sizes and resolutions, and different treatments of web-based softwares, particularly Splash and Java. HTML5 HTML will address some of these compatibility issues, but won't necessarily optimise the way your survey will look on different devices. Just quickly, there are basically three options for conducting mobile research, and each has its own strengths and weaknesses, which I won't go into here. Uh, SMS or WAP-based research is the only option you have for non-smartphones. Mobile web, which is our ex area of expertise at Vision Critical, are hosted on the internet and addressed, uh, sorry, and accessed by a link or through entering the URL in your browser. And the third options are apps, which have to be downloaded by the user for the particular device that they're using. We also need to understand things with, things with the perspective that mobile research is still an evolving field, and its full potential, I don't believe, has been unlocked by researchers yet. Some examples of where it's currently being used are shown in this chart. However, things like geolocation and mobile diaries are skills that haven't been fully developed yet. As I mentioned in my intro, I'm a quanti, so I don't have too much direct experience with the, with the qualitative approaches shown here. But what I think we will see over time is a continued blurring of the traditional quant qual divide. Indeed, what is most exciting to me is the potential that mobile offers in terms of delivering a central on-the-go hub vehicle for seamlessly connecting multiple of these elements together in an ongoing dialogue with respondents, while allowing you to keep each activity short and engaging. Now, if there is only one thing you take from today's webinar, I think it would be this, that to get the most out of it, mobile research should never be an afterthought. Due to the nuances of designing for mobile, the decision to, need to use mobile needs to be made during the research design process, not just tacking it on as an additional deployment and reach option for the fieldwork. 
Of course you can do this, but I would argue that you aren't really conducting mobile research. You're just using, as a, using it as a convenient vehicle. We need to start thinking of mobile as an opportunity to challenge the traditional way of doing things and experiment with new approaches. So let's go over a few things we at Vision Critical believe to be best practice considerations for conducting mobile research. We will go through each of these individually, but just quickly as an overview, you need to identify and optimise for the devices that are supported by your software. Be aware of the available question types and any potential biases of going mobile. Keep the length of your survey under 10 minutes and even less if you're not providing any incentive. Look to maximise your available screen space for the, re the purpose of research, not cluttering it up with unnecessary uh, things. Control for minimal scrolling to make the experience as good as possible for the, the person completing. Use multimedia sparingly and target it for maximum impact. Build in extra time to QA on all supported devices and even on an unsupported one if you're using a mobile web application. And finally, really stop and think about the way you deploy, both initially and over the field work period with the way you send out reminders and so on. You'll notice that most of these are set up and design considerations. To steal a line from the classic Australian movie, The Castle, most research running, most successful mobile research is 90% preparation, 15% implementation, 10% perspiration, and the rest is just good luck. So let's go through each of these one by one. It's hard for me to sit here and say do X and Y and Z in your questionnaire as it all comes back to the method you're using, that is whether you're mobile web app or SMS, and the particular software or app you're using. However, what you do need to assure is that you understand what question types work and how they would display in different operating systems, and then design your questionnaire accordingly. And also, be aware that question types that aren't supported may be skipped by the software you're using. I think this is largely a given with any research, but it's also worth, but it's worth raising again here in the particular context of mobile, and that's that you need to understand the market you're researching and be aware of any potential biases that exist. Consider at the very start of your design process any biases that may exist in terms of smartphone owners generally or particular brands or types of smart, smartphone that could impact your data. Sometimes these may work in your favour in terms of being able to find people that might be difficult to reach through other mechanisms, but other times they may work against you in that you only end up reaching those people that you're not really that interested in talking to. So you really need to, to keep in mind these biases uh, in light of the target group and the objectives that you have. In Australia, we found that there's an inherent bias in smartphone ownership generally but there's no difference between different brands. So somebody that owns a smartphone is inherently different to somebody that, that doesn't, and a lot of this is age and life stage uh, related. So make sure you understand the market that you're researching. Research conducted on mobile devices should also adhere to a slightly modified KISS principle. And that is, keep it as short and as simple as is necessary to answer your key objectives. Research on research that we have run at Vision Critical has confirmed that the same survey will take 50% longer on a smartphone compared to a desktop. In terms of an appropriate length, respondents are willing to give some leeway uh, within reason and up to about 10 minutes is a fair estimate for an incentivized survey. Uh, but however, this is around six to seven minutes of a standard online survey. So when you are, if you are designing on a, through an online platform, keep that in mind that you need to keep it about 60% length of what you, of what you usually used to. Uh, if, if your survey is getting longer than this, you really need to start questioning whether mobile is the right method and consider alternatives. One way we have been experimenting with, with control, for controlling for length 
as breaking longer surveys up into chunks and running them as a series of shorter surveys over a period of time. Now this obviously introduced, introduces other challenges such as missing data and requiring large overall sample sizes to compensate for, for the fact you might have missing data. Advanced warning can potentially be used as a way to mitigate for dropout risk, uh, but you can't remove that risk completely. And I consider your own mobile use for a moment, whether it be browsing, email, gaming, or something else. We often encounter situations where screen space becomes maxed out. This is because real estate on mobile phones is at a premium. So you should look to maximize your available space for the actual survey content. A few things to think about here. Firstly, keep your branding elements simple and avoid using large banners and logos and things that just take up space. Secondly, verbosity. Try to avoid it. Uh, remove, remove any superfluous words from your questions and response code to keep the length of them short so you can get as much onto the screen as possible. Thirdly, images. They can be great for jazzing up the look and feel of a survey. You just need to be sensible in the way that you use them. Uh, only use images in response buttons when there are a small number of options or if it is absolutely necessary for comprehension of the question or the responses themselves. Related to the previous point on screen space is the issue of scrolling. Excessive scrolling can hurt, not only in terms of index finger RSI, but also in terms of being a pain in the backside, and in some instances, the issue scrolling may in fact uh, have implications on the way certain question types are answered. So try to minimize scrolling as much as possible, and where it is unavoidable, you should try to keep it one way, that is, you're only going in the one direction. If you have more than five items in a grid, you should, should consider splitting them over multiple screens. Uh, different software apps will display grids in different ways, so you need to make sure you understand the layout uh, implications of the software that you're using. Keep your answer categories short. Try to keep them to six or less. And this is particularly the, uh, important when dealing with multiple response or scale rating questions. In these cases, scrolling can potentially influence the number of responses that are selected or the rating given for a particular response, given that often they need to be answered in, context, in the context of the other responses um, available. So if the person um, doesn't scroll, then they may forget about what they rated at a, a previous uh, attribute, or if they are scrolling up and down, it becomes laborious for them to constantly go back and check what they've answered. Where it does make logical sense, you may be able to group three or four short related questions onto one screen, for example, age, gender, marital status. Whilst scrolling might be required in this situation, at least the questions logically flow on from one another, and the time saving of avoiding four screens and the associated loading time, etc., is worth it given that there's little risk of the answers being influenced by the need to scroll. This, which is, becomes the ultimate litmus test is, could scrolling influence the way the question that I'm asking is being answered? This is a quick one and pretty self-explanatory. Multimedia is great and can be used to wonderful effect for an engaging survey experience. However, uh, data, uh, keep in mind that data plans on mobiles are often small and load times can be long, particularly when using 3G connections. Uh, using multimedia can introduce a risk of dropout and also lead to respondent backlash if the data that you're asking them to use up for that multimedia is a large proportion of their allowed limit. Also, excessive use of multimedia can dilute its impact. So if you are going to use it, make sure it's targeted to the most important application for your objectives. In terms of QA, using mobile can add time and potential for error. So make sure you allow, allow enough time to check it again. Just to reiterate, there are many operating systems, browsers, screen sizes, and other quirks to mobile devices. Know what ones your software covers and test on as many of them, as many different platforms as you're able to. If possible, and you're using a mobile web, uh, so if you're doing a mobile web survey, also test on an unsupported device to see what that experience is like. 
Can the respondents see a non-optimised version of the survey or are they precluded from taking part altogether? Also, if you're doing a multimodal study, it goes without saying that you need to make sure you check both completion methods thoroughly. At Vision Critical, we believe that if you have the ability, you should give people the choice of when, where and how they prefer to respond. In a group of three incentivized studies run over late 20, 2011 and early 2012 across Canada, the US and the UK, we found that the incidence of completing via a mobile device when given the choice was 11%. In another study on, in the telco industry in Australia, we had around a third choose to complete on a mobile device without having specified a completion method. So clearly there's a wide range of potential and clearly this will, be, this will vary by the market and the way the study is set up and communicated to respondents. At the end of the day, we need to judge, does the study need to be mobile only? If not, do the benefits of going mobile only outweigh any risks? And thirdly, are you going to struggle to reach your particular sample requirements or sample target using mobile only? So this leads me to my final point about deploying intelligently to maximise the chance of getting a rapid response. We all know how quickly our inboxes fill with emails during the day. It is particularly bad on mobiles where people often have multiple email accounts feeding into the one uh, service. Some things you need to consider here. You should explicitly tell people in your communication whether or not they have the choice or if it is a requirement that they complete via a mobile device. If you do decide to go mobile only, be aware of the sample implications uh, this may have. And, even, and the fact that even when advised it is mobile only, many people will still try to complete via a desktop and drop out when they fail to be able to participate. In that study I mentioned earlier uh, across Canada and UK, our, the research and research showed us that around, this effect was around 40% that tried to uh, complete using the wrong device. Uh, and then drop out. This third point is a biggie. Uh, the response window for mobile is tighter than what it is for PC. So you need to deploy at times of the day when people are most likely to be able to complete straight away or, or pretty quickly soon after receiving the email. Um, this is going to be, this is going to vary by the target group your tar you're looking to reach. Um, it might be morning or evening commutes or lunch times for office workers after 8 p.m. for busy mothers, for example. So, and it may mean that you have to end up splitting your deployment into multiple specially filtered deployments to reach different targets at different times of the day. Uh, note also that there are special additional challenges uh, and considerations that apply to weekend deployments, such as you know, the issue of, issue of people using their work email addresses then switching off completely over weekends concerns about privacy issues and the like. Consider giving advance warning if you are wanting to send a survey out over the weekend. So just to recap what we think are some of the best practice considerations for mobile research. Firstly, identify and optimise for your particular circumstances. Be aware of the question types that are supported and the potential for biases in your market. Keep the length under 10 minutes or less if not incentivized and that is around the six to seven market of a traditional online survey. Maximise your screen space for displaying the important content, not clutter. Control as much as possible for scrolling. By all means, use multimedia, but don't go overboard and target it for maximum impact. Make sure you adequately QA for all devices. And stop and think about the way you plan to deploy before pushing the go button. And remember, design specifically with mobile in mind, don't just take it on as an afterthought. That is the end of my presentation. Thanks, Ray.